Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Veterans Day weekend. Uh, and we are all grateful for those who have defended us. Um, thank you very much for coming today. We have a visiting celebrant, Father uh, Christian, who we all know and love. And uh, I also want to welcome all of those people who are joining us online.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil, and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from Ruth. Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to Ruth, My daughter, I need to seek some security for you, so that it may be well with you. Now here is our own kinsman Boaz, with whose young woman you have been working. See, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Now wash and anoint yourself, and put on your best clothes and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. She said to her, all that you tell me I will do. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When they came together, the Lord made her conceive, and she bore a son. Then the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. The woman of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the father of David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read all of Psalm 127, and we will sing the refrain, Watch over us, O Lord, after every two verses. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, 
now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again, as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that, the judgment. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to invite you a little bit uh, years back, like uh, 1971. Uh, Johnny Cash, well, Johnny Cash, <laughs> sang Man in Black for the first time. And I'm reading some of the words from that song for you now. And uh, their significance will hopefully become apparent in a little while. Now here's the lyric. Well, you wonder why I always dress in black. Why you never see bright colors on my back. And why does my appearance seem to have a somber tone? Well, there's a reason for the things that I have on. I wear the black for the poor and the beaten down, living in the hopeless, hungry side of town. I wear it for the prisoner who is long paid for his crime, but is there because he's a victim of the times. I wear the black for those who've never read or listened to the words that Jesus said about the road to happiness through love and charity why you'd think he's talking straight to you and me. Well, we're doing mighty fine, I do suppose, in our street of lightning cars and fancy clothes, just so you were reminded of the ones who are held back up front, there ought to be a man in black. Those are just first few stanzas of the song. There are four more stanzas down there. So now let's go back to the gospel passage of today. But first, according to the gospel of Mark, after Jesus entered Jerusalem to the acclaim of the crowd, he went to Bethany where he spent the night and then he returned to Jerusalem the next day. He went to the temple where he drove out the sellers and the buyers, overturned the tables of the money changers, and would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. Quoting for the, from the book of Jeremiah, Jesus said, you have made the temple a den of robbers. And Mark tells us, when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him. Now, throughout the rest of Mark uh, chapter 11 and extending into chapter 12, Jesus had several run-ins and debates with the religious leaders. Now, all of this leads up to today's scripture. Then, right after our passage in chapter 13, Jesus goes on to tell about the destruction of the temple and the desolating sacrilege and the need for watchfulness. Okay, now in our passage, Jesus does not back down at all in his denunciation of the scribes. Beware the scribes, he begins. Then he goes on to describe men who are obviously very taken with their own importance. They like to walk around in long robes, be greeted with respect, and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. Now, if Jesus had stopped there, we would have a picture of the scribes who think very highly of themselves and who think very little of anyone else. But Jesus went on to say that their offense went beyond that. There was a darker side in his words against them. What did he say? They devour widows' houses for the sake of appearance. They say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. They like to walk around long robes. While their robes might have been black, 
They don't sound at all like the man in black that Jenny cast a song. There is no evidence they had compassion for the poor and beaten down living in the hopeless side of town. And there's no evidence they had compassion for the prisoners or the homeless. And there is especially no evidence that they had compassion for the widows. Indeed, Jesus said, they devour widows' houses. Now, we do not have the particulars about how they went about devouring widows' houses. One author and preacher has said, it appears that the religious leaders were doing something that was making the already vulnerable widow population feel obligated to give to the temple more than they frankly could afford. Now, Jesus took note of whatever it was the religious leaders were doing to create that obligation to give more than they could afford. So as he sat with his disciples opposite the, the treasury, they watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Now many people put in large, many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in uh, two small copper coins which are worth a penny. Some, some uh, v versions says two pennies, but two copper coins equals a penny at the time. Okay. Other than the person responsible for keeping track of how much everyone else gave, it's doubtful that anyone even noticed the widow or what she gave except for Jesus. Jesus not only took note, but also made a comment to his disciples. He said, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. She, out of her poverty, was, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Now, Jesus did not turn to his disciples and say, go, go and do likewise. Nor did Jesus lift this woman up as an example of sacrificial giving, so preachers for the next 2,000 years would have to, to have a good text used in stewardship sermons. Instead, he made note of her giving and commented about the enormity of what she had done. But Mark does not tell us why Jesus said this. Given the amazing way in which Mark carefully chooses what to say and what not to say about Jesus' life, it seems logical that Mark included Jesus' observations and comments about this woman in light of his warning to beware of the scribes who devour widows' houses. So we can make a good case that in making note of this woman, Jesus is further chastising the scribes for creating the condition in which a widow felt she had to give her last penny to the temple treasury. And all the while the scribes were walking around in their long robes, being greeted with respect and always taking the best seats of honor, no doubt feeling very good about themselves. Now if Jesus if Jesus was drawing attention to this woman as a chastisement of the scribes, it seems unlikely he would stop there. Did he give instructions to the disciples? Did he give instructions to the church about how we should care for people who are in a no-win situation with no place to turn? Of course he did, again and again. Jesus helped those who could not help themselves. He met people where they were 
and brought healing and encouragement and forgiveness, whatever was needed. So what do Jesus' words about the woman who gave everything she had say to us today? Probably Jesus would tell us to stand up for those who are the most vulnerable. He would tell us to speak up for those who have no way to do, to do so for themselves. Jesus would tell us to do all we can in the system to enact laws that protect the helpless and the least and the last. And Jesus also clearly knew that working within the system is often not enough. The widow we're speaking about today was in her precarious situation and the system of the day was working as it was designed. As long as there had been systems in place, there have been people who fall through the cracks. Christ's followers like us should be looking for ways to change the systems to prevent the cracks wherever we can. So you and I can help in two ways. One way is to do whatever we can to meet the very real needs and challenges of people around us. That means that we need to keep our eyes and ears open to the people and the world around us. When Jesus mentioned the widow in today's reading, he did so because he saw her when no one else did. No doubt she was invisible to most people. A poor, unimportant person who couldn't help anyone else. Why bother? But Jesus saw her. She was important to him. When we see the needs, uh, we must act when and where we can to help. A second way to help is to remember that we are called to discipleship. How do we bring the good news of Jesus to people who are hurting and in need of help? As we help in practical ways, we are often given real life opportunities to share God's love and the, and the gospel. So if Johnny Cash were still alive, there'd still be reason for him to wear black. But we can keep our eyes, our ears, our minds, and our hearts open to opportunities to help and to make a difference in the world around us every day. Amen. Amen. Together we say, we believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, He was crucified and upon the Sabbath. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the 
right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Amen.
Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Sean, our presiding bishop, Douglas, our bishop, Ed, our priest in charge, Father Christian, our celebrant, Lynn, our deacon, and all the faithful of St. James' House of Prayer. We pray also for the churches in the Minnesota Deanery, St. Edmund's Arcadia, Christ Church Bradenton, St. George's Bradenton, St. Mary Magdalene Bradenton, Church of the Annunciation, Holmes Beach, All Angels by the Sea, Longboat Key, and Holy Spirit, Osprey. And we pray again for Dagny Smith and for safe travels for people who will be attending his funeral tomorrow. present the offerings of our life and labor on the
things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who we'll forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new, and an ending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and have your flesh the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God, Father Almighty, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Thank you, Reverend Villagomesa, for that wonderful sermon, reminding and challenging us to make a difference and teaching us to keep our eyes open to help meet the needs of the people around us and to remember that we are called to be disciple to those who are in need and are hurting. That's a summary. <laughs> <laughs> I said thank you. You did a, you did a wonderful job. You're good. <laughs> Save the date, please, for Harvest Sunday, our Harvest Sunday meal, which will be on 11 24 of 24. Please see Jackie Grant, who is coordinating our Harvest Meal. I'd also like to give a special shout out and thank you to our drop site volunteers. On Election Day, it was a very long day. Dr. Navita James, Maisie Reddy, Leela Miser, David Glicksberg. New to the family, Carlene Raymond, and also new to the family, Shirley Lakeman. Thank you all for your time volunteering for that special effort. At this time, we would like to honor our veterans, both past and present. So if we could please have our veterans here with us today stand, Arthur Dunnigan, Cosmas Edwards, Roderick James, Marvin Martin, Deacon Lynn Grinnell, and Rich Grinnell. In your programs, you have a prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. I would like for all of us to recite that in unison. And while you get your prayer out, we would also like to honor the deceased veteran members of St. James House of Prayer, Reverend Alton Chapman, Robert Colbert, Clarence Lee, Mitchell Leggett, and Charles Miser. Let us pray. Almighty God, God this, this Veterans Day, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad, those under active duty, and those who have completed their service. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.
thank you.